Garrett or Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Fred's Fencer got started back in the day when we had to import some uh, steel cattle yards for our local rodeo club and I saw an opportunity there I and mean, everyone thought they were really good value and well made. Basically once you get started you can make them into any configuration you like. They're very, very, very cost effective. Freight is no issue, we can deliver them right to your farm, uh, right to your site. That in a nutshell is what Fred's fencing it. Feel free to ring me at any time and I'm just only too happy to have a chat with you. Garrett or Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garrett quality service. Garrett or Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Fred's Fencer got started back in the day when we had to import some uh, steel cattle yards for our local rodeo club and I saw an opportunity there I mean, everyone thought they were really good value and well made basically once you get started you can make them into any configuration you like they're very 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 cost effective freight is no issue we can deliver them right to your farm uh, right to your site that in a nutshell is what Fred's fencing it feel free to ring me at any time and I'm just only too happy to have a chat with you <laughs> Welcome to uh, Markate Park, Bulgaria, here on location for this big final for the Spates Championship Shield today. I've got Mark Scully with me doing comments. Um, so look, it's a beautiful day. There's no, not a, not a breath of wind, and the, Mark, the track's actually. Um, I was a bit worried about this track with all that range, and the actually not too bad. Yeah, I've just walked across the field. It's certainly sticky, and I think down the bottom end it might cut up a wee bit. But certainly for the start, yeah, probably better than we could have hoped for, really. 
And we've got a couple of results for you, uh, a couple of big games today. The uh, Kaikarai Prem 2s got up 18-15. Big Crawfy Mark finally has got a championship under his belt. Yeah, he'll be crying in the club rooms tonight. I'd say there'd be a tearful retirement from him and Foxy, but they've been knocking for a number of years, so uh, while we love to see them suffer, it's probably nice they had a win. And uh, in the Prem Colts final, which I've just come from, uh, Dunedin, the Dunedin Marco were playing uh, Kaikarai, and uh, Kaikarai a bit stiff, to be fair. They actually went down 29-28. They missed a kick in front with probably two or three minutes to go, but uh, that's the markers. I think it might be their fifth title in a row, Mark. Yeah, I think the game was always going to be tight. I've had tight results all year. And, look, it's probably a, a little bit of a concern that two clubs have been. So I know Southern and Dunedin were dominant for a number of years, but it'd be great to see the talent spread around. But, you know, they've been the front runners uh, for a number of years now, so another fitting final by the sounds of things. I see a couple of Dunedin supporters rolling your eyes when you said that, Mark. But, uh, look, uh, let's talk about the game today. So, look, um, Southern um, have got the home final. Um, they, uh, they've beaten Dunedin two out of three this year. Um, look, they must go into this game as favourites. Yeah, I think so. Like, initially, I was disappointed when I heard Forsyth Bar wouldn't be available for the final. Finals days, I think, is a great idea. But when you turn up here and see a decent crowd, I think it's great for the club to get the rights to host the final. And as the field's turned out well, I think yeah, I think the home advantage. But we all thought that last week, and Southern got up and surprised uh, Tyree and Dunedin beat Kaikoura against most people's predictions. So anything could happen today. I think it'll be one up front, as all finals probably will be. But I think given the conditions, if it gets a bit sticky, then it might be that you know the, the team that plays well up front and doesn't make mistakes is always in a final. A couple of key players out. Um, uh, Harry Taylor, the captain for Southern, who's possibly been the best uh, club rugby player this year, and the big tight head prop for Dunedin, Rowan Wingham. So they're both out today. How much of a difference does that make to this game? I think possibly more so with Taylor out. I mean, Wiggum as good as he is, I think Dunedin will still be strong enough in the front row. But to lose your captain and your player, look, I, I'm pleased for Harry Taylor to have made, played for Otago, but it seems a bit cruel to have led your side all year and at the last minute. But, I mean, at the same time, as he said in the paper himself, he was pleased to get a chance for Otago. So it's got a silver lining. But, no, I think they'll miss him. But I think a big factor is, you know, a, a lot of these Southern players, apart from the ones that have come from other clubs, of course, played in the final last year. And that's got to be a huge advantage. Big day nerves. Dunedin haven't been in the final for a number of years, haven't won the banner for 10 years. We Southern know what it's all about. That performance against Tyree last year I thought was quite outstanding. And that'll stand them in good stead going in today. Righto, we're just about to prep. They're just about to come out onto the field. Just like to thank our sponsors, Selmac Insulation, Fred Spence and Garrett, all the ODT and Rugby News. And we'll be back with the call very, very shortly. Righto, so back, uh, we're back live now at the Southern Rugby Football Club and there's a, there's a really good crowd starting to build up around the grounds. Can't get a park within miles. And referee Hannon says we are underway. They kick it down towards the 22. 
But even have taken that through Harry Press. He comes out a couple of yards. Oh, it's immediately a mistake. Big uh, Thomas Jackson puts it down. Scrum to uh, scrum to Southern right on the 22. Bit of a uh, bit of a terror start for Dunedin, Mark. Yeah, look, these are the things that happen in finals. I've just got to, both sides have just got to settle down, get the nerves out of the system. But certainly a great opportunity for Southern now. 22 attacking scrum. And we'll, get to, we'll now get to see uh, how these scrum goes. The last time these two teams played, Dunedin had the edge at scrum time, but I think they would have had their big tight, tight head prop run when they playing that day. Um, but they're still looking pretty big up front with uh, Cowley Andrea and Thomas Jackson to put that ball down. Looking for Patrick McAmafi to come off the back here. It'll be interesting, Paul, I was talking to Giff Henry during the week, of course. I think they do have plans of getting both their props on quite early and Sepa Varka and Case Scott, so I'm sure these boys will just be out there to empty the tank as long as they can. Right. Solid scrum from back into the backs now. They, they hit it up. There's a big tackle in midfield from Joe Cook. But the ball comes away. Mick and Murphy's picked it up. It go wide to Belcher, but he puts it down. So what are they going to go to? They're going to go to the lot. They're going to go to the scrum. Possibly a knock-on first, I think, Paul. Yep, scrum to Eden. And we've got a, uh, a very enthusiastic young bunch of Dunedin supporters down the end. They've got they've got drums beating and they've got the mad concrete cutter um, stirring them all up down there. <laughs> right out the scrum to form, right on the 22, uh, Dunedin ball. So it'll be Tim Hogan to feed the scrum. I was expecting a few more, Mark. I, I thought there might. There's a, I see the buses. Uh, there's another bus coming back now from Shark Park. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a few build up from the other game. You know, the earlier games, the Junior Colts and the Colts game. But I think it's a pretty solid crowd, really. Right, so Tim Hogan to feed. We finally got it settled. Solid scrum from the Sharks. Joe Cook takes it up over the 22. Goes to Tran. Been very solid for the Eden all year. Joe Cook. He's found his home in the midfield. Back to Paku, puts it deep down to the 22. Boucher waiting under this, takes it well, gives it back to the electric Mackenzie Hoare, who kicks for the touch line, and he's found touch just outside the 22. Yeah, look, I think Dunedin need to be careful kicking to Hoare. We saw him last year. We said he'd do something uh, extraordinary. Could have been disastrous, but last year, absolutely brilliant touch to win the match. Uh, he's a sort of kid that he can win a final for his side, so Dunedin need, need to be careful not to give him too much space because he's actually proven to be a fairly sensible footballer now. He actually picks his time when to attack, and that was just a good, sensible kick back in behind Dunedin. Well, uh, so this first Dunedin line out, how are they going to go? They've gone to the big man, and uh, Reuben Palmer takes it down well. Army Toma in his standard role of carting the ball up. He'll do that all day for the Sharks. Ball comes back to Hogan, and again he's found Paku. He puts it down towards the halfway and Mackenzie Hall is underneath that. He spins it out to Belcher. Belcher looking for numbers out wide. Finds McCarthy, who finds Tapari, who also puts it down. Dunedin have picked it up. What can they do with it here? It's in the hands of Hogan. He's found big Reuben Palmer, the big 18-year-old bruiser from the Bay of Pliny. The knock on there will come back for the scrum. Yeah, look, just another example of nerves. That was a good pass. Uh, Tapati's a great player, should have taken that, he'll know that, but um, we're still in that settling down period. Um, gosh, I'm just looking at the size of big Ned Penna, hasn't he filled that? He's looking more and more like his big calf head father every time I see him. Yeah, he's getting bigger and he's, uh, he's starting to play some good rugby, so he's probably really, normally comes off the bench, with, uh, but with Harry Taylor, the captain, out because of the targo duties yesterday, he's sort of called into a starting position. Scrum right down in front of us here, just on the halfway. Tim Hogan to feed. Big Oscar Uli Schmidt back from injury, um, sort of standing right behind Ben Parker. Will they get him into the action early, the big fella? Another good Dunedin scrum. Solid Hogan. scrum. Cook gets it wide. And they get it out to the younger of the Schmidt brothers, who puts a nice wee kick through to the, down towards the 22. Boucher's across there to pick up for Southern. He drives it back over the 22. The Southern forwards quickly get around him. Ball comes back in. Mika Murphy drags it up a couple of yards, goes to ground. I'll tell you what's noticeable already, Paul, is the, the one and three for Southern. Huge men and already pretty slow. I'm sure the Dunedin coaches will be watching that. 
maybe uh, Dunedin players to move them around a bit more than traditionally. Joe Cook now on the outside. He's got him out. He's got a wrap. He's got a wrap. But Southern have picked it up. And they've got a kick down the field. Parku racing back to put probably to try and put that into touch. It goes to ground. Does well, actually. Brings it back a couple of yards outside the 22. Dunedin going looking for it. They've got the ball. They've found Harmi Toma. Just a wee bit untidy from both sides early on. A lot of mistakes. It's back in the hands of Waddiston, the fullback, who puts it deep straight down to Mackenzie Hoare inside his own half. He brings it out to the halfway, and then he'll put one of those big changers up the middle. Who's underneath that? Ben Parku. And he kicks it away down the main stream. That's a nice kick from uh, Parku, and he's found torn off a lot of territory there, Mark. Yeah, look, I think that's how they should be kicking. I wouldn't be giving Southern too much ball to run back at them. Just find your touch in the first 20 minutes, force the, and look, there's every chance of winning this line out in their opposition uh, territory. So I think Dunedin should just be settling it down, as both sides should be, but it's a very good kick up to the 10 metre line. Right, uh, so it's, uh, it will be Jake, the impressive Jake McEwen out of the lock attack to uh, feed this line out. Right on the 10 metre line. He'd be the most impressive hooker out of Walker Tips and Stark through. Paul. Oh, but probably a better line out for our two. <laughs> Poor old Yam fingers struggled there, Weaver Dragon. <laughs> I see he was at the club today. And uh, Mika Murphy charges it forward. Goes to ground right on the 10 metre line. Well, I've gone for that. Ball's in, out. Coming into that. They put the kick deep. Waiting back is. Haku again, he might have uh, chipped that straight into touch though, and he does. See, that's what I'm talking about, the last kick excellent, this kick puts his team under pressure. Just best to kick long, let that settling down period happen. And the sun comes out. In fact, it's very balmy here now. Hello to all the listeners around the country, Paul. I assume Peter Keane sitting back having a scapegrace in Auckland. Listen to the coverage. Well, I would hope so, Mark. And hopefully he's paid for that bottle of scapegrace. The shareholders could do with it. Ball comes back. And it's uh, the little halfback in Wilson Driver taking it forward. Again, they charge it up. That's a nice run. Penne. Penne good solid run from Penne. Makes a few yards. They find Einerson, the Swede or the Norwegian or wherever he's from. He takes it forward, and this time it's tougher, tougher. And that one might be Jay Tafano taking that forward, the prop. Driver in there looking for it. He's found Murphy. They're going wide. They're out to number one. That's Tafano taking it forward. And then a good run from Ineson again. Just up to the 22 now. McEwen's got it now. Drapes over the 22. Ball comes back on the southern side. Looking for runners out wide. Mackenzie Hawes got it, throws a big pass, cut out pass, they could score here, and he's in. The big number seven, Conrad Toliafoa, was too simple, but over for the try, five points to nil Southern. Yeah, look, it's a simple game, and what happened there, of course, we saw both big props carry, we saw Ned Penne make some good metres, uh, Martha had a go, but that's just, you know, if Southern can show patience with the size they've got up front, um, they'll be a handful, and I think that's a good example. That if I, I'm sure the coaching staff, big case muse, he'll be looking at that saying, if we can hold the ball for periods of time, the game looks easy. This is right, it's right down our uh, gun barrel. And he's he dragged it, he's just no, way to the right. Way to the right. Didn't so quite strike it nil. properly, but it was close. Five to nil. Did he get, really need to get themselves into this game? Big jock here bringing the water bottles off. He's done a lot of games for Southern over the years, oh, Paul. Say he's been here for seven or eight hundred games. He's Mark. been a great servant of Southern. And it's Ryan Waterston. The uh, little fullback to uh, get us back underway. Remember, it's 5 0. Southern leading Dunedin in the Spokes Championship Shield decider. Pinay again. 
good solid run from Pinay. Made to most two or three yards there. Nail gets it wide to McKenzie Hoare. He's found somebody on the outside. Then they put the weak kick in straight to Parker, who's knocked it on. Referee says we'll come back for the scrum. Let's go back to the kickoff pull. I think that's a nothing kick from Dunedin. They want to put it high and contest it or bang it long. I sort of felt that a dollar each way. There was an easy take for Penna. He made some good metres and uh, yeah, Southern had an easy exit. So it, uh, it'll be uh, Southern to feed the scrum. Uh, little Wilson drive. see some scrum pressure from Dunedin. They've looked at the slightly stronger scrum so far. Be interested to see how they go here. They've got shuffle back a couple of yards, but they get it back to driver. He finds McCarthy, the wee uh, ex North Otago man. That's a big strong run. Good tackle Cook. though from Cook. Yes, yep. Mika Murphy, going to Gordy Yard. And then the big man just all over them, just monstering that little half back there. Big Palmer. He comes back on the southern side. And they go wide again. Again, Tolia Foa showing that strength again, just through that hole. Apparently he was the best player on the paddock last week against Tyra, and he's having a good start to this game. That's a high kick. But Parku's done well. And he's put the kick back and he's put it out on the... He's put so this it out is what again. we're talking about, Paul. He just needs to kick that ball long and get his team out of that. It's two poor kicks and it's building huge pressure on Dunedin. Yes. Now that's uh, not a good start from uh, Ben Parku. So this is uh, a line-out throw to Southern. And they are bet midway between the 22 and the 10 metre line in Dunedin Territory. And it's overthrown. It's gone to the back. It's picked up by Harry Press. Charging forward, Harry Press. Nice run from Press. It's still going, Press, up to the 10 metre line. That's a good carry. And I move this quick. His hands. Numbers out here. They get it out to Ratcliffe, who finds Josh Dent, the wee man from South Otago. He goes to ground right down here in front of us. Ball comes back. Referee says didn't release. And it's uh, it'll be a southern penalty. A great run from Press. Dunedin didn't really capitalise on that. It was on to go wide, but just a bit of hesitation. Uh, once again, I still don't think Dunedin have really settled in this match yet. Again, it's Mackenzie Ward looking for touch. That educated boot. Interesting, Paul, we notice on, when Dunedin are defending, they've got Paku on the wing and they've brought... Uh, Ethan really Schmidt over to the line. So Parker's been put back here to field that kick in return. So they need to get that sword to do a better job. So we haven't got a ball here. Somebody's lost the ball. It's coming eventually. Looks like the Dunedin, the Dunedin crowd may have swallowed it. All the, all the world for a ball. We finally found one. So, Jake McEwen getting some flack from the Dunedin crowd right behind him. Big, big Ineson took that down. McEwen's got it. He takes the run. Runs into Jamie Moe at the Dunedin lock. Ball comes back on the southern side. Looking for another runner. They've got Murphy. He charges it up. Goes to, goes to ground after a couple of yards. Looking for another runner. Found one of the wee props. Who is uh, dragged back Army towards Toma. the... Great tackle. Drag back towards the halfway. Ball comes back on the southern side. Referee says penalty. Didn't roll away. Look, I think that, that rule's tough. I don't think we, any of us fully understand it, but he's been consistent. You know, if you're not getting clear of that ball very quickly, that's two or three penalties he's blown. So Fraser Hannon being consistent with the breakdown, it's all you can ask for. Oh, no, so it's uh, Mackenzie Hall right on halfway to do his bit. He'll be looking for to get it inside the 22 if he can. A tidy kick too, that's a nice kick. Wonderful kick. Excellent kick. So this, this line out's going to form about three or four metres inside the uh, Dunedin 22 and Southern go back onto attack. Very little play on this side of the field, Paul. It's uh, territorially Southern have played it very well and they continue to build pressure through territory. 
over through their last line out. And they've, but they've taken that one down well. It was the big lock that time. It was Corbin Agar dragged that down. And they start, they get a wee bit of a drive going here. Dunedin will have to look at holding them up. They're still going forward, Southern. Things are looking a bit dangerous here. Dunedin with some of those players hanging off. They're still driving it forward. Now they've, now they've been arrested. Ball's been picked up by Murphy. Still going, Murphy. It's only a couple of metres out. Referee says... Now that ball's coming back on the southern side. Dunedin again stop that ball. They were looking to pick and go here a couple of times just to sort of um, soften these Dunedin forwards up. Only a couple of metres out. Referee says penalty again. Not sure what that one was for. What are they going to do? They'll probably go back to the line-out mark. Yeah, the penalty count mounting against Dunedin, but this is what happens when you're playing an, you know, under pressure in your own... Uh in your own half, it's normally the side that's defending that needs to cheat. So, while we can't see from here, it's probably just a uh, just a symptom of the fact that Dunedin have been under pressure for most of this game in their own territory. And uh, so, this scrum will form five metres out. What can Southern do? Can they take the, take this one down and get a drive going and really put Dunedin under some scoreboard pressure? McEwen to throw. They go to the front. Agard, no, in fact, it was Ineson taking that down. Takes it down well. Now they get the drive going. They're looking dangerous here. Dunedin getting shunted back. They're not far from the line. It's in the hands of the hooker, McEwen. Back with the halfback. They go to the blind and then put over. What's a referee going to call? Knock another on penalty. Knock on. Touch judge will get involved here. Brandon Hale. Anything that happened with Brandon I assume he Hale saw it. Forward. Yes, I think he <laughs> might have got a hand to that. Yeah, this could well be a penalty. It could be a yellow, yellow card, card Paul. Uh, the way the rules are now. Couldn't really see whether he made any genuine attempt to recover the ball. Penalty try. Now that is a ridiculous decision. I accept the yellow yeah, card, no, but to say that's try. a penalty try, that is a very, very interesting decision to say the least. But it'll please John Leslie. I'm sure JL's sitting up at Northland watching the game. Hello to John. Very good man himself, and best of luck with Northland this year. I'm sure you'll do well, but uh, it'll bring a smile to JL's face. 12 0 Southern. Yes, yeah, that was a very interesting call, that. Um, yes, but anyway, it is what it is. It's in the book, 12 points to nil. Jock's happy with it, Paul. 13, 14 minutes gone, probably, probably 13, 14 gone on the first half and already they're out to a 12 points to nil lead. They even really need to uh, start playing some territory here. And have they got a man in the bin as well? Yeah, well you, can't have, you can't have a penalty try of that. No, card. So, so, uh, so, so they've, ruled, in the bin. they've ruled that it was a deliberate act with a try inevitable, which who knows, perhaps that's fair, but it's a big call. Uli Schmidt picks it up. Or Schmidt Uli. He gets taken to round right on halfway and Southern just drives straight over the top of this and they've won the ball. Dunedin whips sixes and sevens here today so far on this game. Puts a wee kick over the top. Nobody's back there. And it's uh, look, we're, the touch. We're seeing a real uh, momentum swing here. The crowd suddenly come alive. Southern hit that ball beautifully. They got numbers to the ball. They blew Dunedin off it. Once again, camped back in the Dunedin 22. So this line-out is going to form just, in, just, just outside the Benetton 22. And it's Harry Priest to throw to the line-out. Conrad Tolliafar has been your go-to. has gone to the back and they've just overthrown it. That is just awful. And again, the, it's the, uh, McEwen goes forward. Referee says you too many rolls. And McEwen, that was a very lucky penalty for Benetton. So, I, you know, I'm no expert, Paul, but you're down 12 nil. you got to... Line it near your own 22. Would you throw it to six? I think Shane Flanning would say throw it to two, throw it to two, throw it to two, and when his fingers are bleeding, throw someone else a turn, as we said last year. Yes, no, look, uh, yeah, no, that's all that very ordinary play. And, and Dunedin haven't looked good this year. We've watched a lot of Dunedin games, and they and they do not go well when they throw to six. And this time he's found touch. He's only made probably 15, 16 metres from that kick, though. And it's Harry Preston the road of this line They really need to go. Their, their go-to guy in the line-out is uh, Conrad Motuliga. And uh, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a money ball for him. And the, the 
going to the back again. And luckily they picked that up through big Ruben Palmer. That didn't hit anybody. So this is where the need just need to hit Cook, who's a big lad, hit Harmy, just get some territory and just and just show some patience, work their way into the Southern Territory. Puts a kick deep down to McKenzie Hall back inside his 22, takes it well, comes out inside his 22, and will he run it? No, he's put the kick, he's put the up and under. Straight back to Schmidt Uli, who takes it well. Fires it out into uh, Waterston, who also kicks deep down towards the 22. Back in the hands of the wee halfback. Back to McKenzie Hoare. He brings it forward to the 10 metre line. He puts the up and under. Waiting back for it is Waterston. And it's a bit of a kicking duel at the moment. That's not a bad wee kick from Waterston. Got it deep down towards the 22. But again, McKenzie Hoare is back there. And then he makes a couple of yards and brings it up to the 10 metre line. Ball comes back on the southern side. Back to McCarthy. You can see uh, the southern plan though, Paul. There's no desire to play football in their own half. They're just banging it back to the need and hoping and waiting for a mistake. And this might be it. It's, it's, it's the uh, the big winger, Oscar Schmiduli. Takes it to the ground outside the 22. Hogan puts it over the top, but he puts it into touch. Not a bad we kick from Hogan. Just to settle it down a bit, that this line out of form just inside the Dunedin 10 metre line with a uh, southern throw. Remember, it's 12 points to nil. Southern up over Dunedin. Beautiful conditions, Paul. We couldn't ask for better here at Bathgate Park. Well, I've had to take my jacket off. Yeah, likewise. So McEwen to throw to this line out. Again, it's been overthrown. Picked up at the back by Southern. Didn't look very straight to me, but it's come back on their side. And they take it up over the 10 metre line. Little halfback looking for it, found it. Nice wee drive from uh, Tafono. Ball comes back again. Picked up by New. He gets it to Mackenzie Hoare. They go wide. It looks like it's big Penne over on that side. Smashing it up towards the, t towards the 22. Again, they take it forward, McEwen, but he's well and truly wrapped up by Ratcliffe, the Dunedin open side flanker. Again, it's uh, Agar this time, just playing one-off runners at the moment. Now they go wide to McCarthy. They find the in pass to Tapari, straight through. Gets a nice Great offload load. away to Toliafoa. Ball comes back, Belcher's got it. He's found New, out wide. He's looking for a runner. McCarthy's going to score. No. Into touch. He's into touch. McCarthy good play again from Southern though, very good play. Kapato making the half break, lovely offload. She's all one-way traffic really at this stage, Paul. Yes, they uh, really, uh, they are playing well though. They've done, done good phases of play and they've, and they've used that short side too um, very effectively. So Dunedin to throw to this line out. So where's Harry Prince going to go here? Steering right into the sun. Right on the, just five metres out from the line. They go to the back again. La Liga back there. Does it, does it well. Harmi Toma brings it forward. Only knows one way. Again, they get it back to Waterston. And that's not going to find touch. Lands in the hands of Belcher. He founds Mackenzie Hoare. He goes wide. And that's a nice tackle across there on uh, Finau Fasita. Ball comes back on the southern side. Again, it's uh, Penne taking it forward. Lively game from Penne. Looking for runners. Now goes wide to uh, Mika Murphy, who goes to ground. He gets a nice wee offload away. And they go wide to Belcher. Belcher gets taken down on a tackle, but McEwen's on top of it. McEwen going at the line. They're only four or five metres out here. Looking for some runners. They found it in the form of big number one, Tofono. Ball coming back on the southern side. They're only a few metres away. Can they put another try on the board? Now goes wide. They go wide to uh, Mackenzie Hoare. He's through the hole, Mackenzie Hoare. He's through the hole and scoring. 17 to nil. Dunedin have no answers at this early stage of this game. Yeah, look, you give Mackenzie Hoare too much space. He just got on the outside of Josh Dent there. Uh, beat him for pace and the covering tackle. He managed to kick his way through that. Uh, look, if I was Dunedin, they've just got to hang on to the ball. You know, you, you can't win the final without the ball and they're kicking the ball away. They're kicking it to me. That's probably a sound tactic initially, but when you're down 17 to potentially 19-0, they've got to change something, whether it's time to get the big props on and keep the ball on hand a bit more, rumble it up the middle. 
But I think Dunedin really need to have a change of tactic here because we keep seeing more of this. It could be a long day for them. Yes, we're uh, 15, we're about 23, 24 minutes into this uh, into this first half and it's nearly point a minute stuff. 17 to nil with a kick to come. Mackenzie Hoare out wide. Can he nail this one to make it uh, 19 to nil? Well, you've got to say, really, apart from the first handling error, uh, which went one each way, well, Southern haven't really made a mistake, and that's what finals footy, and it's hard to play against. You know, they're doing everything right. They're kicking it into the Needham territory. They're putting pressure on line-out time. Scrums have probably been parity, really. Neither side has dominated the scrums. Southern are just playing the right part of the paddock and aren't making mistakes. So Mackenzie Hoare is about five or six metres in from touch uh, to try to convert his own try. crowd on that side of the ground will let you know. I think he may have dragged that away to the right left, to the left that he yep. has. So the score remains 17 to nil. 25 minutes gone, first half. What have Dunedin got? So again with this kickoff, you know, Dunedin is splitting their kick. I'd be putting seven forwards here, I'd be putting it as high as I could and I'd be trying to contest it and win it back. These sort of kicks that land on the 22 are really just gifting Southern possession. Righto, so Waterston to get us back underway. Dunedin really haven't been uh, haven't been in the Southern 22 for the entire first half so far. Again, just again, it's a nothing. Give you right, Mark. Another kick, and it's Penne bringing it up again strongly. Goes to ground. All comes back on the Southern side, looking for a runner. Big Tafono again taking it up. Ball comes back on the southern side. Driver's got it. They find McCook, they find Hoare. He puts a wee kick through. And that's gone into touch. It's very reminiscent of last year's final, Paulo. The southern big men are just doing their job. They are big, they're hard to stop, and they're just hitting it up, making the advantage line, giving Mackenzie Hoare options to kick that ball in behind Dunedin and keep Southern playing in the right part of the field. So Dunedin to throw to this line out. It'll be Harry Press. Probably looking for Conrad Laliga again. And Mickey Mar as Mickey Murphy comes back into the line out. And oh, and he's just knocked that on. He's just knocked it on. Oh, he's Cole missed that. He's, he's missed, he's missed, missed that. that. Come back on the Dunedin side. Joe Cook gets it into the midfield. They go wide to Waddiston. They find they find Uli. Uli Schmidt can Uli run. He can run. Uli, and then he just gets ankle tapped. But he showed his big, powerful fend there too, Big Oscar. Yeah, I think we've seen what Dunedin need to do. They need to get the ball in his hand. But of course, if they can get the ball, maintain some phases. But he's a really he's a real weapon for Dunedin, and they need to get the ball on his hand. Again, the big Southern boys starting to walk a bit, but they're still doing the job, Paul. Here they are. They've got the few hands on hips. And it's McEwen to throw to the line out. Can Dunedin put some pressure on at this line out? They found Agar at the front. Ball comes back a weird untidy, but it's back on the southern side. Driver's in there looking for it. He finds a runner in Ineson, the hard-working lock. Ball comes back to Driver. But it's slow position. Looks like he's going to put the wee kick over the top here, and does so. Haku's got it for Dunedin, does well. Brings it forward towards the 10-metre line. Gets the ball back. They come blind. Lotu La Liga going to ground. Hogan's in there quickly and picked it up. Big Oscar Cowley Andrea takes it forward. Ball comes back to Hogan, looking for a runner. He's got Joe Cook. They've gone wild to nobody. Josh Dent picks it up. He gets it up to the halfway line and goes to ground. Good work from Dent to recover. Again, Dunedin looking a wee bit untidy. Harry Press takes it forward. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. And they go wide into the midfield. Cook's got it now. waterston has got it. Oscar... Schmidt Uli. I think one of the risks here, Paul, is that Dunedin go side to side without going forward. Now they've got to punch, Joe, Joe Cook's punch punching here and get, get in behind the advantage and then go wide. I think we're, Dunedin have realised they've had to have a change of tactic and they're starting to throw it side to side. You've got to go forward before you go wide. Here's a good play. Parku's Here's a good play. Parku made the hole. Still going, Parku. Dragged down on the, just outside the 22. Playing under another, advantage. Another penalty. They, they should fling this because they're playing under advantage. Jackson, the big prop, and he just had it stripped cold. Again, they're untidy, Dunedin. The referee says penalty. There was a penalty back, and they've had a penalty up here as well. So two penalties in a row. It's a good direct running from Paku. He showed us what they need to do, is punch through that advantage line, then things start opening up. 
they're going to have a shot at goal. Is that a good idea at this stage, Mark? Just to get yeah, some look, I, I, I think 17-3, if you can kick it, of course, it's not an easy kick. It's, a, it's, a, it's probably a good thing to get some points on the board. Just settle things down. So Parker's 15 metres in. Um, in fact, this Waterston will yeah, take this kick. Yeah, I think he's in the team for his goal kicking. He kicked very well against Kaikoura last week. Kicked six or seven goals, so that's, that's one of his key jobs is to knock those goals over, help keep the need and stay in contact. He's a little, he's not, a, he's not a big man, but yes, you're right. He's in this, he's in the side for his goal kick, and he's actually kicked pretty well for them the last two or three weeks. Number seventeen, Danil. I can't help but feel, Paul, that um, I think I think the replacements are going to play a big part today. I know last week Dunedin really thrived when they bought a couple of their... Uh, Jay Davis had a great game, as did uh, Sipavaka and... Um, and Kay Scott. And Kay good. Scott. They all yeah. made big contributions. And Southern will be the same. I'm sure Case has got a few uh, cards up his sleeve. He'll be looking to make some strategic... I think, in fact, there's big Narayan Strickland warming up over there already, he perhaps, well halfway. Mm -hmm. So I do think the replacements will play a big role. Lovely that. kick. Excellent kick. So Dunedin on the board, 17 to 3 with that Ryan Waddiston penalty. And we have probably uh Sepa now, Paul. Big already. Sip, big Sepa Barker's already on the field. He's gonna put in a big shift today. Well, I guess the beauty of replacing your front row, Paul, with an injury late, you can always bring them back on. Yeah. That's a reasonably strategic move you can make these days. But uh, big to, big Thomas didn't have a great start to his day. He, he dropped the ball early and then dropped another one just before. So um, see, see the difference in the kick pull. He gets it nice and high and sudden are there to meet him. They haven't given an easy escape, an easy exit. Big Super Varka straight into the game with a carry just outside the 22. Hogan looking for runners. He decides to put the kick in himself, but he's kicked it straight to oh straight to Mick and Murphy. But Mick and Murphy has put it down under no pressure. So this is what can happen. I mean, that was a pretty average kick. Really should have fielded it. Maybe just had a wee look up. It makes a mistake. I have to say, Paul, I think Hogan's had an excellent year for Dunedin. Kid that had huge reps coming out of school. He was a good footballer for Dunedin. Maybe lost his way a bit 18 months ago, but I think he's really bounced back and had a great year for Dunedin. Yeah, I think he has. He's, this has been his, his best year that I can remember. Um, and he's been he's, and he's and he's playing injured too. He's got a, his, his back's absolutely had it. And he just um, just keeps grinding it out every week. But he's um, he stopped thinking about his game. He's just he's just he's just seeing the ball and passing the ball. I know when I was coaching the Prem Twos, he was one of the kids that was when he wasn't required for the Prems, he's willing to come down and play for the Prem Twos. And that says a lot about a kid. And I think you know I'm pleased he's had a good year because you know, he didn't throw on the towel. He was willing to play the Prem Two games and get back into form. Yeah, no, he's played. Um, you know, I've, I've had a chat with him a bit over the, in the over a beer at the, in the, back in the club rooms, and uh, he's really enjoying his rugby now, which is good. He stopped thinking about it, and he's just going out and playing some coat. And he feeds the scrum. And again, that's a good scrum. Sipa Varka makes a big difference already. Your really penalty here, the drive. southern up. That, I don't, I don't understand the rules, Paul. Southern front rows up. up. So he should have been a penalty, but no. Back to Parku. Looks for Dent in the midfield. They found Waterston. They find Big Oscar. He bumps off, just bumps off his man at will. Ball comes back on the leading side. Hogan's there looking for a runner, but they go to the backs again. But they're going a bit wide too early, I think. Yeah, I think it's too, it's, it's a bit how does hurt. It might work, Paul, but we'll Larry have to eat our words. And then he uh, doesn't find a, didn't find a man, but the ball comes back on the leading side. Hogan's there again. Lotu La Liga pops a wee pass to Malt. And that's, and that's a nice pass. He gets it round the back. Well taken from Dent. They're looking for numbers. Oh, Big Oscar! Can he run? Can he get there? Can he get there? Yes, he can! Big Oscar, Uli Schmidt over for the try and Dunedin are back in the game. 17 points to eight, kick to come. We called it, Paul. You know, we got a bit of go forward and a couple of beautiful, possibly risky offloads, but when they work, they're always good. Once we punched in behind, you know, Uli Schmidt's the guy they've got to get the ball to. He's quick. Oh, and his parents are standing right in front of us. Mum's beaming. <laughs> so great, but I, I can't say enough, you know, if Dunedin can get in behind Southern and get the ball onto the flanks, I do think they've got a clear advantage out there, and he's just showing that now. Yes, he's uh, his own uh, young voucher. He's, uh, he fended him off the first time he went, and that one, he just bumped him off that time. Just but, showing some real strength. Well, the previous time he got over, and voucher, you know, did okay to retain him, but Simpson to party got over and did the extra work, and that put him on the deck. Second time when he got a one-on-one, -on -one, they got exposed. Yeah. 
So on this is uh, we'll spat, we'll have a good view of this kick too. Waddiston's uh, he's five or six metres in from touch and he's running three or four metres outside the twenty two. Okay, I must, have, I must apologise to Mum and Dad. I've been calling him Uli Schmidt all day, and it's Schmidt Uli, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> He's just been admonished by his mum. Schmidt Wheelie. There you go. I've just been given some uh, <laughs> pronunciation lessons. So here's Waddiston. Kicked his first penalty. Can he put this kick over and get it to 17 to 10? While we're on the subject, Paul, why has a kid like that not had a look at Otago? Is he, is he in the picture? Well, I, uh, I've written a couple of columns this year, Mark, where I've said that uh, Schmidt really should actually be in the Otago team. I think he's been a form winger. He's scored 11 tries now in club rugby this year. He only, he's only been beaten by Jeremy Arce, who scored 12, and Jeremy Arce's in the team. That's Lovely a nice kick. kick. That's a nice kick conversion from Waddiston. So it'll be interesting now, you know, Talk about momentum swings. Now it's time Southern's turn now to shore things up. They've given up ten points. Uh, you know they'll be looking to settle it down. Uh, it's a funny old game, and you know when you get your tail up, Dunedin just like last week, Dunedin scored thirty and answered point. Kaikurai came back with nineteen points. Looked like they're going to take the game away from Dunedin, but it swings in roundabouts. So a, a crucial period before half time now. So we've got about uh, we've probably got about six or seven minutes to go to half time. That's in, it's fallen into the hands of Mowat again, Mowat. who's been a, just a tireless worker in that Dunedin pack. Doesn't get too many kudos as he played his hundredth game a couple of weeks ago. Again, it's uh, the big man, big Sepa Barker jump, dr driving it forward. Hogan puts the wee kick over the top, possibly not far enough, but he just Good gets tackle. absolutely creamed in the knock on. on the younger, the younger brother, the younger brother with a big hit. With a big hit, and that knocked on. That'll be a Dunedin scrum. This is turning into this early uh, performance on both flanks, Paul. Both making impact. Now, here's where I'd like to see Dunedin take a set, use big Joe Cook or one of the boys in the midfield, perhaps hit uh, Sepa or one of the big forwards, a couple of phases, and then let's try and work it wide again. But that's how they've got to play it. Right, oh, no, so scrum to form just inside the uh, southern half. 17 to 10. Probably got uh, five or six to go, probably five to go to half time. Sepa might have had an injury, the big Sepa Barker might have had an injury there, but no, he's, uh, he's going to form the scrum now. Finally, finally, we're going to get the scrum down. Hogan to feed for the Sharks. Good scrum. Good solid scrum, and they get the wee roll on too, just for good measure. They get it out to Cook, he's a powerhouse in the midfield. Waddiston's got it, he's found him again, he's found him again, but this time Boucher does a better job. Waddo's there on defence, and then it's uh, the wee man, Josh Dent, takes it forward. Ball comes back to Hogan, looking for runners. They go wide again, they go to Cook in the midfield. What's Cook going to do? He drags it up, goes to ground. Back in the hands of Hogan, looking for a runner. He's found Ben Park, who puts a wee kick over the top, and that might go into touch. No, it's back in the hands of Mackenzie Hall. Referee says no. It's, he's put a foot out. Dunedin ball. So now we're seeing a bit of a change in reversals here, Paul. So now it's Dunedin uh, playing in Southern Territory, forcing the error. Um, yeah, yeah I get, you get a real feel there's a bit of a swing in this match, but it'll be interesting to see Southern can dig deep. It's a real contest. The crowd numbers have started building up too, which is great to see. So it's Harry Press to throw to this line out. Very interesting when the ball comes wide. Ryan Watterson certainly knows his role. He's not taking the ball to the line and engaging. He's passing it quickly and giving um, Schmidt Uli as much time as he can to get that one-on-one -on -one run. Now they've got their drive going, Dunedin. They've been good at this all year. They've scored a lot of tries from this. They've already gone 10 to 12 metres. They're still going forward. They're only four or five metres out now. Still got the drive on. Can Southern hold them up? Can they keep it going? Harry Press in the back there with the ball, and they've held it up now. Penalty. Penalty. Penalty's got his arm out. Ball comes, they go to ground. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. What are they going to do here? They're going to go to... And again, they just go to ground. They're only a metre out. They're still looking for runner. Sepa Vaca gets his hands on it. Again, they're, they're held up short. Still going forward. He's still got his arm Penalty out. out they again. go for, again for that try. They're still short. Coming back on the side. And they go... Oh, oh Big cock. Cook just puts it be down. Referee says come back for the penalty. What do they do here, mate? Well, they depend, go back to well the it depends how wide he goes. Yeah, look, I think I'd kick this. Waddison's kicking well. 17-13 in a final. Unless they feel they could put it in the corner and put some pressure on with the line out. They're taking the scrum. That's, cool That's the what scrum. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, they've decided they can push them over from here. This will be interesting to see if the uh, Southern Scrum can hold them up. I'd Looks like to see Dunedin hold. A couple of times we've seen the Southern uh, front row start to rise up and Dunedin have cleared the ball. I wouldn't mind them just leaving the boot a bit longer and seeing if they could force... I think they put. I think Narayan Strickland could be on already, Mark. Yeah, he was warming up earlier. I can see the long-haired friend of Jesus yes, out there the now. Yes, the big-bearded man. There's some definitely him. Yep. X Shark. So what can they do here? So they've obviously brought him on to try and shore the scrum up. They're only five metres out. They're 15 metres in from touch. Can Dunedin get another try on the board and get right back into this game? Taking an order amount of time to get it set. How long have we got? Oh, I reckon we've got about three or four minutes. It's gone straight it's down. Comes down, but it's going to be cleared. No penalty. Reset. Reset. See, the ground's actually held. I'm amazed, I'm amazed the ground's actually held. It's actually held up okay. I thought there were some puggy bits inside those twenty twos, but um, the ground doesn't look too bad. They are clearing the old tags out at every every scrum. Two or three minutes to half time. Crucial period. Walked past the club rooms earlier and saw Billy Somerville had the number one space in the window. He'd have been purring when they were up 17-0. But uh, game certainly evened up this latter half of this first I half. I went in to get a couple of bar stools for us, Mark, and nobody would give their bar stools up for me. They just told me to go away. <laughs> right, here we go. Concrete Cutter's got his boys on the charge down there. Oh no, here we go. This time, can they hold the scrum up this time? It went down last time and they negated their advantage. And that's a good scrum from the Sharks. They go forward, they go forward. They're still driving it forward. Tone has got it in the back. Now here's got a question. It in the back. They score. Try. Yeah, too big, too strong. Harmi Toma over for that try. 17 15, kick to come. Minute to go to half time. Well, Fraser Hannon's hand was going to be forced here. He was given a penalty try in the first half. That was an inevitable try, and as it turns out, Dunedin scored it. Possibly saved the, uh, the referee a tricky decision there because I thought a try was inevitable, and Dunedin duly scored it. Interestingly, Dennis O'Day was calling for the penalty shot earlier. Now he's sitting here nodding, saying, what a great decision, what a great decision it was to take the scrum. Righto, so uh, young Waddiston, can he level it up right on half-time? I think that might be half-time by the look of uh, the, what the referee's uh, done there. So Waddiston to take the shot, to get them all square. He's kicked two from two so far. He's got it two or three metres outside the 22. He's right on the 15 metre line again. He banged one over from there just recently, so he knows exactly what to do from here. And there's just no breeze. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's very, very still and calm here today. He'll know these conditions well. He was a Kings boy, Waddiston, wasn't he? He was a Kings boy. This, this is his hood, his home track. He had a lot of practice goals here and over at Kings in his time. Remember, this uh, coverage is brought to you today by Selmac Insulation, Fred's Fencing, Garador, the ODT, and Rugby News. And he's pushed that away. He's pushed that away, and the referee says half time. So 17 points to 15 with 40 minutes to play, and we'll be back after these uh, this after this ad break. Come visit the team. Fred's fencer got started back in the day when we had to import some uh, steel cattle yards for our local rodeo club and I saw an opportunity there. I Many people thought they were really good value and well made. Basically once you get started you can make them into any configuration you like. They're very, very, very cost effective. Freight is no issue. We can deliver them right to your farm, uh, right to your site. That in a nutshell is what Fred's fencing is. Feel free to ring me at any time and I'm just only too happy to have a chat with you.
Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Fred's Fencer got started back in the day when we had to import some uh, steel cattle yards for our local rodeo club and I saw an opportunity there. I mean, everyone thought they were really good value and well made. Basically once you get started you can make them do any configuration you like. They're very, very, very cost effective. Freight is no issue. We can deliver them right to your farm, uh, right to your site. That in a nutshell is what Fred's Fencing is. Feel free to ring me at any time and I'm just only too happy to have a chat with you. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Fred's Fencer got started back in the day when we had to import some uh, steel cattle yards for our local rodeo club and I saw an opportunity there. I mean, everyone thought they were really good value and well made. Basically once you get started you can make them do any configuration you like. They're very, very, very cost effective. Freight is no issue. We can deliver them right to your farm, uh, right to your site. That in a nutshell is what Fred's fencing it. Feel free to ring me at any time and I'm just only too happy to have a chat with you. Righto, we're just about underway. We're back uh, back with you live. Remember, it's 17 to 15, Southern up over uh, Dunedin. But it was a game, it was a half of two halves, Mark, really. It was all Southern, and Dunedin came back strongly. Yeah, look, Southern were controlling the territory and uh, forcing errors, and really, it was all one-way traffic, 17-0. You couldn't really see Dunedin working their way back into it, but, you know, they stuck to some good tactics. They kept the ball in hand. Uh, clearly, I think they want to try and run the big southern pack off the ground, moving the ball side to side. But as I said earlier, there's always a, a risk that you go wide before you go forward. So I'd like to see them still punch it up, but by all means, let's get the ball wide to those wingers. Pretty psychological, though, that pushover try. I mean, they, it was a five-metre scrum, and they just 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 monstered the uh, monstered that southern scrum. That's got to make it a bit tough for the uh, uh, the southern boys walking into that second half. Yeah, what I don't know enough about, uh, you know, the southern front row replacements, Paul. I don't know, you know, what they impact. Boys, or will they just fill in numbers? Well, you know, they can come in and make impact. Well, big Michael Matter Arthur, who has not hasn't come on yet. He's like he's a massive absolutely. Man, so he's and a bit of a rock. He's not that great around the field, but he like he he should sure, sure that's. Oh, and up. he's a big game player. He's been around. He's yeah. He's uh, he's won some good matches for the side. 
Well, I think it's going to be an intriguing second half because it really was a, a game of two halves, the first half, and I think it'll be the team that comes out here uh, and perhaps fires the first shot. Well, and, and the good news, at, at 17 to nil, things were looking a bit grim, but at least we've got a, we've now got a real game on it. We've got a real game on our hands, which is great for this big crowd here at uh, Bathgate Park today. Yeah, look, you'd have to say the crowd's... The crowd's four or five deep in lots of parts. There's a good crowd here. Right, uh, and they go they go back towards the 22. At Penne under it again. They, they find Mackenzie Hoare, who kicks it away down that side of the field. They throw it quickly into the hands of Schmidt-Uli. On to Waddiston. He goes wide to Parku. Parku tries to make a hole. Takes the ball, wisely takes the ball in. Southern get over that, but Nadine have done well to regroup. Sepa Varka's going to take that up now. He goes to ground. They'll be looking for his mate Case Scott to get him off the bench pretty quickly. Park, who's got it, he makes a charge. He gets taken to ground by McCarthy, the wee second five for Southern. Balls are back in the hands of Hogan, who finds the big builder himself. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. Hogan's put the wee kick over the top. That's a better kick from Hogan. That's contestable. And they've let it bounce. And the big, big Palmer, man takes it in. Big Palmer and makes a yard. Good work from the big man. Only 18 years of age. Been a very impressive lock in this competition this year. Harmi Toma found it, found the wee pass to Schmidt Uli, um, who gets taken well down down well on the tackle. Again they charge it forward. Mow it this time. Are Cuts we seeing a slight inside. change of tactics already though, Paul? There seems to be a, a reluctance to kick the ball away. They're looking to keep the ball in hand more. Go side to side. They'll set this. They'll swing it back the other way. Goes Clearly up. trying to work the big southern forwards around. They move, they're really moving it around now. Cook goes wide they to the They need more field. depth though. They're going to move it wide. Schmidt-Uli again going forward. Ball comes back. They haven't really made a lot of ground though. That's it's, the problem. It's a wee bit, it's a wee bit stagnant. Get, There's a wee punch direct. through the middle. Lotu Liga does a good job there. Sepa Varka charges it up. Ball comes back quickly. Referee says no. Got their hands on it. Didn't get enough people to the ruck that time, Dunedin. So that's the risk, of course. When you go side to side, you can run yourself into trouble sometimes and you, you end up short on numbers at the breakdown. They've just got to make sure they move the ball to where the numbers are and make sure they have plenty of men at that breakdown to secure the turnover. So it's with Mackenzie Hoare. He'll be looking for the touch line. And brings it down on the 10 metre line. Dunedin 10 metre line. Caleb Nielsen signals the spot. And uh, McEwen to throw to this line. Didn't look very straight. Referee says play on. Picked up by, uh, might have been Ned Penne. Then they make the run forward, just through the middle. Ineson did it, that was Mika Murphy in fact. Great job from them. Now they're looking to set. Halfback goes now, but goes straight to Penne. Wilson. Could have been Penne, you did right. Referee says, Dunedin got over that. Did a really good job there. Jamie Mowat. I think the message is loud and clear. As I said, what you want from a referee is consistency, and he appears to be consistent, but that, he's blowing those very quickly. So if you don't get numbers to the ball, you're going to be vulnerable. Right, uh, Waterston looking for touch. Three or four minutes gone, second half. Remember, 17 15. This game brought to you by Selmac Insulation, Fred's Fenton, Garador, ODT, and the Rugby News as Waterston. Yeah, very good kick. Good, touch. good kick. On the 10 metre line, Southern. Dunedin to the throat of this line out. We've gone to a shortened line out, which means we can uh, put Max Ratcliffe, the flanker, out on the wing here. Yeah, this is the role Jay Davis played last year, when, uh, last week though, against Corker. They ran him out on that outside channel a lot. Very untidy, very untidy. But picked up by Harmi Toma. Wonderful run. Just runs it forward. That's what he does. Back on the Dunedin side. They go to the midfield. Dent's got it. Dent takes the charge. He's held up. He gets a knee to the ground. But he's had it ripped off him oh, by that's, McCarthy. That's, Just that's, stolen that's, cold. That's a poor decision. It His was, knee was on the ground and he allowed the southern man to rip it. So Parker's the knee, got to run this into touch. Yeah, look, the knee was clearly on the ground there for me. And uh, he allowed the southern man to rip the ball after the knee was on the ground. Yeah. He knows better than me, but... Not often I agree with you, Mark, but yes, I think uh, his knee was definitely touching the ground. But that puts uh, Southern in a good attacking position. This line-out's going to form on the Dunedin 22. They're just getting their numbers organised. They've also gone for the short line-out. 
probably looking for Ineson here, I would suggest. And hitting Murphy in the middle, I dare say. Dunedin got up and spoiled it. And Mowat's all over the all over that man. Ball comes back. Driver's got it. Looking for Murphy. He's found Murphy. He charges it up. Goes to ground. Ball comes back on the southern side. They go wide to New. But he gets buried by the number seven, Ratcliffe. Ball comes back on the southern side. They find their runners. Big Tuffer, Tuffer takes it forward. This time it's Narayan Strickland, straight, off the, straight out of the desert. Ball comes back on the southern side. Driver's got it. He's found Penne again. He offloads to Murphy. Murphy looking for a runner. He's found Agar, who goes to ground. Dunedin tried to get that ball, referee says. Oh, that's a weird untidy. Uh, no, but anyway, they've been, they've been penalised. They've got it, and they put the wee kick over the top. They'll come back for the penalty. Yeah, see, that's, just, that, that's just unacceptable. Brandon Hale is standing there. Late charge after the mark was clearly taken. The defender was nowhere near the ball when he caught mark. And now we see a bit of a Donnybrook going, which is just unnecessary. What's the, the referee's going to try and settle this all down? Is they'll, he gonna... they'll come back to the southern penalty. Ineson's been called out. So they've two captains. They, have they called both captains in? They have. Yeah, look, I think it'll just be a general warning and back to the penalty. But that kick was never even contested. Really. I can't see how it could possibly have ended up in a pushing match. Looks like uh, Mackenzie Hall's decided he's going to get the penalty. He's brought the ball back. Let's put it right out in front. That'll give them a uh, five-point lead early in the second half. Should be meat and drink to Mackenzie Hall this. Remember, 17 to 15. He's a metre outside the 22. Uh, not a breeze in sight. Should be a pretty easy kick for this man. Yeah, look, this is what we're talking about. They come down here, they, you know, forced an error. It's just, it's just territory, isn't it, Paul? I mean, yeah, the side that's playing on the right half of the field, quite a strong sun at the Southern's back too now, which could make field and kicks a bit difficult in the second half. So... I think we'll see more of the same tactic, trying to play the game in the opposition 22. It certainly paid dividends for both sides up to now. And he's drained it. Absolutely drained it. Yeah, great kick. He struck it beautifully. Never in doubt. Let's hope Watterson can get this kick up nice and high and give Dunedin a chance to attack the ball and possibly force a turnover so they can play some rugby in the opposition territory. Oh no, so back on halfway. It's in the hands of uh, young Ryan Watterson, the, the Dunedin fullback. He puts it down towards the 22. They're going to let that bounce. It's uh, Belcher who puts it down to back to Watterson. What's Watterson going to do well, here? He's kicked, he's kicked way too early there. He should run the ball up and engage yeah, them. He's moved their back three round before he kicks. Mackenzie Horn now. What can he do? And he finds a nice touch on halfway. Yeah, I think when they kick long, I'd rather see Dunedin run the ball up a wee bit, Paul, which normally forces their back three to move around and can open gaps up in the back. The crowd's sitting to give uh, Bill and Brandon Howell some stick here. I well, think that might be the two B Town boys starting yeah. to come into their own yeah, here. Just on a, the, uh... reasonably well lubricated. <laughs> they need to go. Oh, they've just they've got the tap back. They look for numbers. They got, they find Parku. He finds Dent. Dent's going to run it and then puts a cheeky wee offload to Waddiston, who was taken down. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side, and that's a better kick from uh, back there is Mackenzie Hoare, just outside his 22. He brings it forward. Puts the high kick up as Waddiston got underneath that. And he's knocked it on. See again, though, a nice high kick. 
giving Mackenzie Hoare a chance to get up and just that little bit of doubt in the, uh, their minds of Waterston. Good kick, good chase, forced the turnover. Yeah, the first half, is, uh, this has started exactly like the first half. Dunedin making uh, some unforced errors and uh, allowing Southern back, onto, uh, back into their territory. They really have to get, the, uh, they have to get their scrum going here. Out of interest, Paul, I was asked earlier, why would someone like James Dolman not do this game? Is he away doing NPC, woman NPC or something? Is he? Well, no, they don't. I don't think they, those guys, those top guys, are doing the woman's the, the, the woman's grade this year. So look, oh. there's probably no real. Oh, look, I mean, at the same time, he, he hasn't refereed all year. That they try to give it to their yeah, best. Yeah, no, and that's fair. Referee. No, Fraser's been the best. He yeah. deserves the final. That's yeah. fair. I've just been told that Dolman's away doing a Fiji. Uh, Pacific Island test match. Yeah, but then situation. again, that same gentleman's given us some pretty bad information over yeah, the last 10 or 15 minutes. That's dead right. Ball comes whipped back and it's in the hands. I go wide to Mackenzie Hall. He puts another wee kick through. Watterson's outside is 22. He puts it deep, deep into southern territory. Wilson Driver waiting back there for that. He brings it forward. And now they charge it up through Tolia Foa. He's had a good game, Paul. He's carried strong. He's solid. Ball comes back. Driver in there looking for it. Finds it now. Agar takes it forward. Dunedin get over it. Still driving forward. Uh, big Tofono takes it forward. Penalty. Referee's got his arm out for yet another penalty. And it's out in front. McCarthy still going. McCarthy showing a nice clean pair of heel. Ball's come back on the southern side. Remember they're playing under penalty advantage. And it's Agar again taking it up over the 10 metre line. And there's a wee knock on from Wilson Driver. He says come back for the penalty. Be interesting whether they take a shot here. I think Mackenzie Hall would have the would have the deck. It's only 40 metres out, 41 metres. I um, oh know he's not now. Going, no, it's now closer to 45 or 6. I'd imagine he'd still have a shot from there though. Sun at his back. Might be just out of his range mark possibly. No, he's, no, having, he's a having a go. go. So remember 20 to 15. And if Mackenzie Hall can kick this, it gives him that 8 point buffer. Sean Collins in Brisbane. How are you, mate? I hope you're watching this game, Sean. The boys, have you, you've, got, you've got your love, ch love children over here. G'day, Sean. G'day, Sean. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> Very popular man. Mackenzie Hoare. Can he put the eight points in front? It's, it's struck him pretty well, but it might be short. Just away to the Just side, I think, Paul. He probably would have had the length, actually. Just slightly away to the right. Nice kick. So Dunedin know now they can't give a penalty away in their own half. Joe Cook, who has been uh, doing quite a few of the kickoffs, the, and has actually got a very educated drop kick. Uh, Jay Davis uh, makes his way onto the field, the, the absolute speedster, coming into open side flanker in place of um, Ratcliffe. Max Ratcliffe. Yeah, that's a great hoof from Cock. That's a big, big, big dropout. Well inside the 10 metre line. Mackenzie Hall's back there. He puts up the Changer. What can little Waterston know? It's not Waterston. And it's been picked up by Waterston. Off the hands of He's done well. Spinuli. We've done well. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. Big room. Big room and Palmer goes to ground. All over that Southern. Penalty could be coming. Referee says no. But indecisive. Is this but indecisive. A bit static for Needham. They've got to push forward, get in behind Southern, and then look to go wide. Jay They've Davis got to punch forward. forward. Puts the wee kick over. Waiting back for it. They go wide into the midfield to Mackenzie Hoare. He'll look to find a he'll look to find a hole deep down there. Waterston's back there, takes it well. Brings it outside as 22. He puts his foot to it. Puts well, this has come into in the field. midfield. Let it bounce, they might save it. This has opened up both sides McCarthy, of the field. McCarthy's putting it, he's, he's gone long. Waiting back for this park who's been inside his 22. He'll try and find touch. Shanks it off the side of the boot and he's only made four or five metres. Well, this is finals footy and I've got to say right now, Paul, it's a need and look to be the shakier side of the two to me. Case Scott into the fray. Who was... Uh, Ultra impressive last week in the semi-final against Kaikoura. He really ignited that Dunedin pack when he came on in the second spell. Who's 18 on for Southern, Paul? 
Big number 18 is none other than Jermaine Mika, who hasn't played a lot of rugby this year. He's a doctor, and uh, he's, he, he's been out with work most of the year, so he's only played a handful of games. But he's a handy footballer. He's an impressive young man to be a doctor and a good footballer. Another Referee's penalty. He's got another penalty. Ruben Palmer all over that. He's been penalised. Yeah, look, it's hard when you pin there, but the way the rule is, if you prevent the ball coming out, penalty, fair and square. Sometimes you feel hard done by when you're stuck there and you can't move, but it's just the way the game is now. So what's he going to do here? I'd say be taking the shot at goal. They're having, yeah, look, a, having a bit of a I would, summit conference. I, I would have thought to get outside seven points would be crucial for Southern, but they've decided to go to the line the corner. Very good kick. Righto. So can Southern win this line out and get a line out drive going against Sister Eden Pat? Is here, here come the cavalry. Here's the cavalry on Couple now. Of changes Big now. Mike Matter Arthur is on. And looks like it's uh, who's coming off there? Number 11, Finau Fasita's coming off. And I'd say he's being replaced by, not sure who that is. And Tafa Tafa's gone. That could be Paul Tupai coming to the yes, game. Yes, it is. So Southern have won this line out. Now they try and get the drive going. Dunedin will have to regroup. Southern have got a real roll on here. Real roll on. Dunedin won't want to give away the penalty. Now they go to ground. They take it to ground under their own steam, though. So good work from the Dunedin pack. Just pulled back there a wee bit. Ball comes back on the southern side. They get the drive going. Penalty again. It's got another penalty for offside. And they're only five metres out. In fact, they might be right on the line. And they're looking to stretch out and score was Ineson. Ball comes back on the southern side. They've lost a metre. Now they drive it forward again. Can they get over here, Southern? Still going at the line. They're only short. They have scored. They have scored. 25 to 15. Kick to come. Yeah, look, that was just all about sustained pressure. You know, they forced a couple of areas from Dunedin. and they camped in the territory again. I know it sounds like a stuck record, but... You know, the side that's playing the territory and is, is patient, good line-out drive, it went to ground, they didn't panic, they had a couple of penalties, but they played through that. And you'd have to say, Paul, a well-taken, well-deserved try to Yeah, Southern. and that was Jack McEwen. Jack McEwen, the big hooker, he got over and scored it under those massive bodies. So that gives them a 10-point lead. Dunedin have really need to find a way back into this game. And with a kick to come, could be 12. Certainly justifies the uh, decision to kick to the corner, Paul. We thought maybe getting outside seven would have been a good idea, but good decision in the end. So 25 to 15. Right down in front of us, uh, Mackenzie Hoare, on the back of uh, Grunter's Ute from Dunedin. Twenty-five to fifteen. Can he make it twenty-seven and really make things hard for them? They'll have to score two tr converted tries to get back into the game. He pulled it away. Pulled it away to the right. Twenty-five to ten fifteen. Points ten points. Ten point lead. Uh, let's let's. We'd love to see. I'd love to see Dunedin put this high and chase it. Get up and contest and try and force some position in the opposition half. Righto, so uh, we've got, um, I think we're about 20 minutes in, Mark. James Bolton on and 21 for Dunedin. Ruben Palmer gone. Ruben Palmer's gone, they brought on James Bolton. See, to me, that's just a giving the ball back again, I'm sorry. Again, a nothing kick. So Cam Burgess looks like Cam oh, Burgess. stolen this. Stolen it. Dunedin drive towards the 22. Anyway, so I'm uh, a bit of confusion. Ball, ball comes back on the Dunedin side, just outside the 22. They picked it up. Big step of Varka crashes up towards the 20 end of the tackle. Now there's no the roll clear from Southern there. And they go wide this time. They go wide out to the, the danger man. Still going. Big Schmidt Uli. Goes to ground. Probably 10, 15 metres out. Ball comes back. Hogan's got it. 
looking for runners. Cam Burgess now in at first Got to five. punch forward. They've got to go and forward. now they go for Kay Scott. Kay Scott drags it forward. Ball comes back. Referee's got his... No, he'll his arm out for a penalty. Comes back to Cam Burgess. Throws the pass to Waterston. Probably he shouldn't be the man that's taken it up. He's only about eight stone dripping wet. Ball comes back to Burgess. Burgess takes the line on himself. Goes to ground. Had it ripped clean. Absolutely ripped clean. This would and not want to stay into the need. This stays in there in trouble. Young Uli, young Schmidt Uli, what's he going to do here? He won't be able to run away from Mackenzie Hoare, I wouldn't have thought. He gets taken to ground. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. Very slowly. Bolton. Goes to ground, he's in touch. Poor decision. He had the chance to keep it in, he had the chance to kick. He's been driven into touch and given Southern an attacking line out. Yes, they've just given away 70 metres there. Yeah, yeah, that's a very poor carry from Cam Burgess, and he just had it ripped clean by, uh, and I think it was uh, Conrad Toliafawa. So McEwen to throw to the line out. 10 point lead. I like the look of the seven for Southern Paul. Uh, Conrad Toliafawa, he's played well. He doesn't look to me to be struggling, he still looks pretty fresh. He's, a very he's having tidy, a big game. Very tidy young player. Big run from Murphy. Goes to ground. And he can get over the top of that. Well done from Harry Press. Did really good stuff there. Oh, referees. Very unusual. Bolton goes forward a yard. Comes back to Hogan. He puts the kick over the top. Paul Tupai going back to get it. He's found it. He's found McKenzie. He's found McKenzie Hill. He'll be looking for corners. He puts the spiral, the big spiral up. Waterston underneath that. Takes it well. Great take. Does really strong. And takes it forward. Gets a hand over the top. High tackle. Slow to reward it. Yes. Got to say, Paul, it's not quite desperation time. But I think it's almost time for Dunedin to put the box kick away. Yep. Keep the ball in hand. And back themselves to do what they did against Kai Kai last week. And control the game. Control position. Mackenzie Hall has handled the high ball well all day. As have his two wings. And they've diffused that pretty easily. Waterston on his own 10 metre line looking for touch from the penalty. And Excellent kick from That's a Waterston. nice kick from Yeah, Waterston. lovely kick. Right, they really need to get their hands on the ball now, the Sharks. They're looking right into the sun now. And this line out just outside the 22. Harry Press to throw to the line out. Looking for numbers. Do they go to Bolton? Do they go to Lotto La Liga? They go to Lotto La Liga, takes it down well, gets it back to Hogan. He fires it into the midfield. Joe Cook drives it forward. Back in the hands of Hogan. He's looking for a runner. He's found Dent. Dent's found Harry Press. Harry Press straight through. Two yards from the line. They need looking for it. They need to they need a big ball carrier. They've got big Sepa Barker. He's pulled down a yard short. Comes back on the Dunedin side. They're looking for runners. They found it number 22, and that's Jay Davis. In fact, it's Cam Burgess. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. They charge at the line. They're only held up by a metre. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. They go wide to the midfield. Cook's got it. Taken down. They've lost it. Back the penalty. I'd have to say, Paul, over on this side, Harry Priest, probably one of the more impressive forwards today. He's really stepped up. He uh, shows a good turn of foot for a hooker. He's having an excellent game. So what are they going to do here? They're right out in front. They're going to call for the scrum. Would you agree with that, Mark? Oh, look, I probably wouldn't, Paul, because I'm a traditionalist. I would have got within seven. But uh, if they score, it'll be a great decision. Right, I remember they pushed over in the first half. They put a push-over try late in the first half. Can they do the repeat to the Southern Pack? They've got big white Matt Arthur on now, so that should stabilise their scrum. But Sepa Varka and uh, Kay Scott will be looking to some work, some real pressure here. But they have lost their big man. They've taken Ruben Palmer off. That will actually, that uh, they won't be able to push as much without his bulk. A crucial moment, Paul, I think. If the Eden can score from this, we're in for a riveting last 15. But they're probably going to have to strike soon. Otherwise, you start playing desperation catch-up footy, and that's when you make mistakes. Got a feeling they might go to Joe Cook. If they don't get the push over Mark, they might go to Cook and try and use his power to go through McCarthy and score. It looks in this match, doesn't it? It's done well though, McCarthy. Strong, we bugger. Good scrum, Rip. It's gone down. Picked up by Tommy Toma. He gets driven back in the tackle. Picked up by Dunedin. Or has it been picked up by Southern? Back on the no, Dunedin, on the Dunedin side. side. They've got it again. They go at the line. It's a bit Jay static. Davis. They, they need to come from depth. Here's Harry Press again. Good tackle, tackle. from Mick and Murphy. Got over the top of that. 
Dunedin got over that again. Again they go forward. La Liga, going for the line La Liga, he's dragged down three or four metres short, ball comes back on the Dunedin side, again they drive at the line, they're only a couple of metres out now, looking for runners, they've found K Scott, he goes at the line, he's short, ball comes back on the Dunedin side, Hogan's got it, finds Cam Burgess, what's Cam Burgess going to do, he goes to the line again, they're still a yard short, ball comes back on the Dunedin side, again they drive at the line, good run from Sepa Barker, ball comes back to Dunedin, again looking for runners, can they get it down? Can they get it down? Can they get it down? They can! Great and try! In the corner. <laughs> Great try to young Schmidilli. He's over for the try and he's got his arms in the air. Dunedin back in the game. 20 to 15. Kick to come. Right, a shout out to their brother Bronson. Hopefully, the the hopefully you're tuned in in America watching. But both Schmidillis have crossed now. This game's really coming alive. So that was Paul all about just getting down here, hanging onto the ball. They chipped away. Sepavaka hit the line two or three times. Joe Cook was strong in the carry. And all of a sudden, a couple of passes and they were exposed on the outside. It was good, good patient play from Dunedin. There's a big crowd now, Paul. That crowd's eight or ten deep now. Down as, there, the, uh, as the sharks start creeping over the barrier so we can't see the kicker. I can sort of see him just through the crowd there. Can Waterson put this over from right from the sideline? He's been kicking well today. 20 to 20 to 25 to 20. Crowd goes deathly quiet. No, he no, just he didn't strike it, it well. Just dragged it away to the, just dragged it away to the left. Righto, we've got, uh, I reckon we've got 12, 13, probably, possibly 14 minutes to go in the game. And Dunedin down by five. Southern still have the lead. At least it's going to be, I think it's going to be an absolute cliffhanger, cliffhanger of a finish. Just top six this year, Mark. There's not, there hasn't been much between those top six teams playing this year. Yeah, I think it's made for a good competition, Paul. People have been guessing, right, you know, right to the end who's going to be in the final. A couple of good sides missed out last week. Uh, yeah, it's a good healthy competition when it's like that. Mackenzie Hall puts it down towards the 22. They're waiting for it was Waterston. Oh, and he just got that kick away. This is going to bounce. Picked up by Schmidt Uli. He's found a runner. He's found a runner, and it was forward. Well yep, picked fair up. call. Fair call. We're, yeah, right in, front we're in perfect line there. Brandon Hale had it. Definitely a forward pass. Unfortunate, because it was a great chase after Southern let the ball bounce, but a fair call, definitely a forward pass. Yes, it was. There's a bit of some ang there's some angry young men down there now. Some angry young men. Anyway, so Southern in no Southern hurry Scott. to reset this pool. Mad Eye Moody's on for Southern. Ex uh, Bailey Moody. Ex Dunedin Shark, Bailey Moody. He's come onto the field for uh, Southern. He'll be looking to make an impact. Good to see what Sepa can do here. Marking the Ryan. Two big men. Dunedin needs something special. Southern, they just look to have a good steady platform win their own ball and continue to drive the ball down to the Dunedin Territory. Yeah, they certainly, with that scrum in there, on that five metre scrum, they certainly held up well the la in that last scrum, Southern. Interesting to see how they go here in front of us. Can Dunedin get the big weight on again? Big Ned Penne back at number eight now. It's a good scrum from Southern. Great scrum. Yeah, good Great solid scrum. scrum from and they go, they go to Tupu, Tupu, Paul Tupai. He goes to ground just on the 10 metre line. Comes back. Uh, big... Big, 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 Jamone Mika takes it forward. Mike Matt Arf has got it now. They go wide. They found big um, Uli Schmitz all over that, wrapped him up like a blanket. Comes back on the southern side, though. Looking for it, looking for runners. And Matt, Matt Arf has put it down. The ball's gone behind him. Dunedin get on that, but Southern have done well. On the halfway line, looking for runner. Jamone Mika again in the big red headgear. Great hit from uh, Sepa Vaka. Taken down by Sepa. Ball comes back. Looking for Mackenzie Hoare. What's he going to do? He'll put the big changer up. And this is under it, Cam Burgess. What can he do? He's taking it well, Cam Burgess. And then he threw a forward pass. That was just a shocking decision. There was massive space out the back. All Cam Burgess had to do was nudge it in the corner. 
engaged, unfortunately, ball sport for Dunedin not playing smart at the moment. They've got to get down the, uh, the southern end of the field. Yeah, that was a crucial turnover. Absolutely crucial turnover. The scrum's going to be right in front of us. Southern scrum, since they've bought Mel- Matt Arthur, this scrum has certainly settled down for Southern. Remember, it's 25 to 20. Five point lead to Southern. The clock winds down. We've probably got about 10 minutes to go in the game. What have Dunedin got left? Can Southern hang on? Both sides pretty much emptied the bench, Paul. Uh, there won't be a lot more to come on. No. Another excellent scrum Another from Southern scrum. holding. Back to Moody. Moody. comes back to Moody. Now to New. He's found McCarthy. He goes wide to Hoare. Hoare takes it over the halfway. He founds his winger. He keeps going. Goes to ground. Ball comes back on the Southern side. He's back there, the wee halfback. Gets it away, Bailey Moody. He just runs right into hit. a wall. Right just hit. runs into a massive wall. The massive builder wall of Mowat. Mika again takes it up. Again, didn't even get numbers on it. It's stripped loose. And again, there's been a wee kick through. Jay Davis. Jay Davis. Jay Davis with all his pace. Picked up by Tupai. Brave, great job. Brave from Tupai. Yep. Great, great pick up. Jermaine Mika's down just on the halfway. Back in the hands of Mackenzie Hoare. He puts it down the side. That's a great kick. He did a great job. Did a great job. And he, he puts the he up kicks and under. very early, doesn't he? This time, what it, Kenzie it. Hall's underneath it. No, it's not. In fact, it's Big uh, Ineson. They're probably going to have to stop play here with the rip with um, M- Mika down. Looks like it's a bad knee injury. Again, Southern take it forward. That's a nice run. That's Ball comes back again, on the I Southern think. side. Talia Foa, it was. He finds Narayan Strickland, who hits the hole. Referee's got his penalty. arm out for another penalty. Mike Matt Arthur, big hit from Joe Cook. Ball comes back on the Southern side. What are they going to do here? They just charge it up. Go to ground. They're going Probably to have to a call case for stopping it's the game, going. Here, I think. A lot of pace out wide. Dodd Edgar. He takes it forward. Still going. He's found the man on the inside. They could go on the way. They could score. They could score here, Southern. Bailey Moody. Bailey Moody. Close. Comes back on the Southern side. Looking for runners. They get runners. They'll get it wide. They score here. They get it wide. They get it wide to Big Mike Matter Arthur. He's found Tupai. Tupai's in. Tupai scores. That could be the game. Great try, Southern. Fully deserved. They uh, they kept their heads. They held onto the ball. Again, and uh, Big Mike Madaf kept his cool. He didn't look to run the ball on himself. He just took a good take, turned and swiveled and fed it to the quicker man around the outside of him. You'd have to say a fantastic Southern try. Well deserved. Yeah, I was interested. They, they just um, kept skirting the uh, the injured man in the midfield, but um, they kept the gun. Uh, Mika's no good. He's, he's, he's coming off. So uh, this kick, this kick, 30 to 20. I don't know if there's enough time. There's probably t- six, eight minutes to go in the game. Uh, and it's Mackenzie Hoare to try and put the yellow thing on the cape, put them out to a 12-point lead. They get to a 12-point lead. I think this game's done. Interesting feature of the game, Paul, you know, the penalty count. They've tended to come in, in phases, and, and that's all to do with pressure. And, the, you know, the side that hasn't got the ball and is trying to win it back inevitably infringes. And I think uh, Fraser's done a good job. The penalty count appears to go in um, the, uh, the favour of the attacking side because it's the defending side that has to take the risk. Three metres in. In. No. Oh, yes, he may have nailed it. I don't think he'll have the length. Not sure. No, it's sure. Short. It's interesting, Paul. You know, he, he, he turned down a penalty from 40. He brings his conversions back so far. They're almost 40 metre kicks again. Yeah. I don't know why he doesn't take it by the 22 and give himself a chance of finding the length. Right, so here we go. There's probably five, six minutes to go in the game. Oh, Dunedin have got a strike now. Sun setting. Get... Sun setting on Bathgate Park and maybe sun setting on Dunedin's chances. At least they can get up and retrieve this kick. It was a nice alliteration from you, Mark. Into the hands, they take that well. Then they go to ground just outside the 22. So Southern will, will just be t- taking their time back to their trusty, dependable Mackenzie Hoare. Puts it deep into Eden territory, and they let it bounce. It's been picked up by the younger of the uh, Schmidt brothers, who puts an up and under. Who's going to take that? 
Great he's ta- take. Great he's take. Did a great job. That might have been McEwen, the hooker. Ball comes back to Bailey Moody, looking for a runner. He's found Tolly Afoa. He goes to ground. Ball comes back on the southern side, looking for runners. They go wide. Out to McCarthy. He puts a kick to it. Back to Waterston on his 20, just outside his 22. What are they going to do here? A bit more urgency. He's, uh, he's gone round McCarthy. Then he's fallen over. But he, then he's found pass. Cam Burgess. Then he puts the kick in. That's a better kick from uh, Cam Burgess. Putting them back on their heels. It won't quite make the goal line. But looking for they found Mackenzie Hoare again, though. And it's a beautiful looking kick from Mackenzie Hoare. He's just dragged off. Has it gone to touch? No, it's not out. It's not Play out. On. Big Schmidt Udi's got it. He goes forward, goes to ground, just outside the 22. Comes back on the Dunedin side. They drive on again through K. Scott. Ball comes back. Hogan's got it. Looking for runners. They go out to Sepa Varka in the midfield. He'll only know one way. Goes forward, Sepa. Nice break from Sepa. Might Matt Arthur trying to get over the top of that. Referee says, let it go. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. Conrad, Conrad Lodu La Liga's got it, but he's well, well handled. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. Looking for a runner. They found K. Scott. But they're not going, really going nowhere. Good defence from Southern. Ball comes back again. Watterson's got it. They go wide. Cook's got it. Makes a few yards. Goes to ground. Dunedin in there looking for it. Can they get it back? Slowly coming back on the Dunedin side. We've got a man down, Atami Tomer in the midfield. And again, they charge it up through Harry Press, but not really making a lot of yards here. Great defence from Southern. They go, they go the blind this time. Again, they run it. Could be the wee Josh Dent, the, the wee centre for Dunedin. Ball comes back on the shark side. Looking for a runner again. Harry Press has got it. Carry well all day. Good tackle from Ryan Strickland all over him like a rash. Ball comes back to Dunedin. Cam Burgess hits it. They hit it. They hit They hit the ruck and it's uh, Bolton this time. Looking for a runner. They've looking, they're looking wide here. Penalty. Might be Jay, Davis. To bang it Jay Davis takes it up. Again, well handled. Ball comes back on the Dunedin side. Playing a lot of phases here. Lotu La Liga. He flips it out wide to K Scott goes to ground, they're still outside the 22, haven't made a lot of ground, this time they find Joe Cook, he puts it down, referee says penalty. So what do they do here Mark, do they, they, well, t- if they I, can't take the three, can uh, they? Look I think if Watterson's capable of kicking this far they should take it, they've got to score twice to force extra time, so it might as well be a penalty now and a try later is the other way around. Look, the distance in that sticky conditions might be a bit far, but if it was me, I'd be taking a shot at goal if he thinks he's got the length. He's going to do it. He's yep. going to do it. I think this is a good decision. If it goes over, they give themselves a chance of a seven-pointer to force extra time. Even if they kicked the ball in the corner and rumbled over, they still had to score again. Yes. So here we have 30 to 20. Ten-point diff. Ten-point diff. Can Waterson's put his name in the record books here. Get it back to seven points and give this... Sharks have sniffed of going do, to extra Do we time. have any idea of real-time Paul? Are you still just making it up? I'm just, making it, I'm just making it up as I go. I've got the game finishing at about 18 minutes past. I reckon we've only got four minutes. Four, three or four minutes. Well, a crucial kick here. This would get, send us up for a grandstand finish within seven points. He's right at the end of his range here. Especially in wet conditions, or puggy conditions. Can he put the three on the board? 20 to 30 to 20 as we speak. Watto comes in. He's hit it beautifully. Has it got the legs? No, it's a no, way, it's a way to, the to the left. left. Way to the left as the clock counts down. Got to down. chase this. And Southern can just suck the time up now. So they just start doing a bit of time wasting at the back. As Mackenzie Hoare slowly brings it out to the 22, sucking up a few couple of, another couple of seconds. Referee gives him, gives him the shout. They'll be looking to kick this deep. Come on, Fraser. They've got to start it at some stage. Here he goes. It's a big kick. Oh, oh Burgess has me. put it down. Burgess has put it down. That could be the game. Right there. Right there. Yes. Uh, again, you know, look, it's finals footy. Mackenzie Hall kicked the ball down to the opposition. Hoped for a mistake and he got it. So Southern now, their scrum's been sound. They'll look to just suck this up at the back. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised to see them work the right. 8-9-15, Mackenzie Hall rolled it into the Southern changing room corner. Dunedin will find it very hard to get out of here. Yes, the, uh, the sun could be setting on Dunedin's day. They've had a reasonably good day, though. They've already won a Colts final. They won that 29-28 um, with a very tight affair. Congratulations go up to Kaikarai. Uh, they won the uh, P2 final with a late penalty to win that 18-15 over Tyree. 
uh, to give Crawford his first banner in the seven or eight attempts in that Prem Twos. And it looks like it's going the way of Southern here with a 10-point lead with only minutes to go. Sniff's beloved Tigers are live and kicking two, Paul. Yes, they are. Semi-final. Here's the 8-9 we call. Here we go. They go eight, wide. Nine, Mackenzie Hoare, and he's put the wee kick through it like a play, as prescripted. Right? And then uh, Watto puts the kick, that kick out. away. Uh, and Southern have played a smart game, Paul. You've got to say, full marks to them. Didn't need also. You know, they've, it's been a great final. We've seen 50 points in sticky conditions. Uh, and it's not over yet, of course, but I do think Southern have played a pretty smart game. Yeah, they have. They've certainly controlled, uh, they, they controlled the first 20, 25 minutes of the first half, and they've certainly controlled in most of the second half. And uh, it's, uh, it's McEwen to throw to this line out, right on halfway as the sun sets. And well picked up by Ines, and he's been good for them all day, yeah, Ines, and, and, he got, and then they've got a big drive going. And they'll just suck up the time. Just suck up the time. This is a really strong drive. They've gone 9, 10 metres. And uh, still going forward. Textbook, still going textbook forward. finishing from Southern, you've got to say, Paul. And we're starting to see some of the Dunedin faithful depart the scene. And uh, still going forward. They've now gone, they've gone 8 or 9 yards. Now they go to ground. Ball comes back very slightly there, but they'll be in no rush to get this out of there. I think they've been told final play, Paul, the way they're structuring this. They're just they hitting it ground, up. They're just going to suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. They go over another couple of yards. They go straight to ground. Ball comes back on the southern side, but they're just winding down the clock. It's after, it's, it, does, it could only be 30 seconds to go at most. Ball comes back on their side again. And they're going to put this in touch. No, they're still going to run it up. It's Mike Matter Arthur. Takes it up towards the 22. Ball comes back on the southern side. Again, they just drive it up. Ineson again. In fact, it's not, it's the number 20. Ball goes to ground. Looking for it to even come over the top. Have they turned that over? They're looking to turn it over. No, they go wide again. McEwen's got it. Been a Herculean performance from the hook of McEwen. Ball comes back again on the southern side. Again, they drive forward. Go to ground. Again, they're in there looking for it. Still got it. Just sucking up time. Again, Mike Matt Arthur. He's been good since he's come on for Southern. He's been one of their real heroes in the second half. Ineson again drives it up. Still not going anywhere, but just holding on to the... All they've got to do is hold on to the ball and just wind the clock down. Big hit from Sepa Varka. Puts him straight to their knees. Comes back on the southern side. Another Dunedin boy hits the ground. Um, could be, over again. Could, I think it, it is big. That comes back again. Ineson still got it. Ball comes back on the southern side. Going nowhere. That's now it. they kick it out. That's it. That's all over. The Southern faithful invade the track. Southern have won this game. They've won the Spates Championship Shield. 30 points to 20. And Mark Scully, you'd have to say they deserve to win this. Yeah, look, a clinical finish from Southern. I think it summed up the way they played the game, really. They played to their strengths. Uh, they played within themselves. They didn't risk too many things. I thought some of their big boys up front, I thought McEwen. I thought Ned Penne. I thought Tolly Afoa. Murphy, they were bloody strong. They very suddenly lost the ball in breakdown, which made it very hard for Dunedin to, to force a turnover and get back in the game. Look, I think it's a game both teams can be proud of. The coaching staff of both seats should be very proud of their teams. I thought uh, Tamura and young Giff Henry, uh, Steve Mowat, you know, they've done a great job with Dunedin to get them through to the final. Case taking over when JL went up north. But I think on the day, I don't think even the uh, most staunch of Dunedin supporter could begrudge Southern their victory today. They, they played it smart and they played it well. Yeah, they did. And, and, and hats off to uh, Pete McIntyre. He was uh, unceremoniously dumped from Varsity at the start of the year. He's come out here and proved his critics wrong again. How many titles has Peter McIntyre won? Let's be honest. Super coach. They call him super coach. Yeah, look, su success seems to follow him, the big uh, loose forward from Waikaka. But like I said, it was a good crowd. I think it was great to see club rugby uh, getting the big crowd. It was a big crowd in the end. It did build up, but I guess some, some of the uh, lower grade rugby finished and people came in. But look, a fitting spectacle for a final. Uh, and like I said, I don't think there could be too many uh, you know, ill feeling from Dunedin. They, they played their guts out, uh, but I think on the day, Southern played a, a very good, clever, well-executed final. Yeah, they did, and they deserve the win. So that, that just about wraps it up here. Just like to thank our sponsors, Selmac Insulation, Fred Spence and Garador, the ODT and Rugby News. And just remember, the uh, to the victor go the spoils, and it's Southern today. They've won this game 30 points to 20, and they'll go to the summer hugging that shield. And we'll be back with you again next year. Thanks, Paul.
Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Fred's Fencer got started back in the day when we had to import some uh, steel cattle yards for our local rodeo club and I saw an opportunity there. Many people thought they were really good value and well made. Basically once you get started you can make them into any configuration you like. They're very, very, very cost effective. Freight is no issue. We can deliver them right to your farm, uh, right to your site. That in a nutshell is what Fred's Fencing is. Feel free to ring me at any time and I'm just only too happy to have a chat with you. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. Fred's Fencer got started back in the day when we had to import some uh, steel cattle yards for our local rodeo club and I saw an opportunity there. Many people thought they were really good value and well made. Basically once you get started you can make them into any configuration you like. They're very, very, very cost effective. Freight is no issue. We can deliver them right to your farm, uh, right to your site. That in a nutshell is what Fred's fencing is. Feel free to ring me at any time and I'm just only too happy to have a chat with you.